Victoria, Australia, in 1854, was a land of stark contrasts. The gold rush brought immense wealth, but also simmering discontent on the bustling Ballarat goldfields. Thousands of miners, many recent arrivals, told under the harsh sun, their dreams of riches often dashed by the harsh realities. A system breeds resentment. The colonial government, eager to capitalize on the gold rush, implemented a licensing system. These monthly permits, costing a hefty 30 shillings, allowed miners to dig on crown land. For many already struggling, the license felt like a cruel tax on their dreams. This simmering resentment grew stronger with the arrival of Commissioner Robert Reid, a man known for his harsh demeanor and uncompromising approach. Reid's administration tightened licensing enforcement, employing a squad of notoriously corrupt troopers who routinely harassed and intimidated the miners. A spark ignites the flames. On a sweltering November afternoon, a seemingly trivial event sparked a chain reaction. A scuffle between a digger and a trooper over a license escalated quickly. News spread like wildfire, igniting a sense of outrage among the miners. A large crowd gathered, fueled by anger and frustration. Leaders like Peter Layla emerged, channeling the crowd's fury. James Whelan, a young Irish digger, found his voice amongst the throng, denouncing the oppressive license system and the brutality of the troopers. In a spontaneous act of defiance, a mob set fire to the Eureka Hotel, a symbol of both government authority and the exorbitant prices levied upon the miners. This act of rebellion marked a turning point. The miners, united under a newfound sense of solidarity, took their fight to Bakery Hill. The Southern Cross rises a beacon of hope. On the windswept slopes of Bakery Hill, a new symbol emerged. The Southern Cross flag, emblazoned with the words, Liberty, and Regeneration, became a rallying point for the disgruntled miners. Led by Peter Layla, they swore a solemn oath to stand by each other and fight for their rights and liberties. Over the next few days, a sense of purpose took hold. Working under flickering kerosene lamps, the miners embarked on a rapid construction project. A hastily built fortification, dubbed the Eureka Stockade, rose from the earth. Ditches were dug, and tents were converted into makeshift shelters. A sense of camaraderie, born out of shared hardship and a yearning for justice, fueled their resolve. A fatal miscalculation and a bloody dawn. However, a crucial miscalculation cast a long shadow over their preparations. Many miners, deeply religious, clung to the belief that the colonial forces wouldn't attack on a Sunday, the Lord's Day. This misplaced trust in the sanctity of Sunday would prove to be a fatal error. Sunday service and lunch or man the stockade, a devastating choice. With Sunday approaching, a debate arose within the stockade. Many miners, longing for a day of rest and religious observance not to mention Sunday lunch with their families, opted to leave the stockade for the day. This significantly reduced the number of men defending the fortification. Those who remained, like James Whelan and Sarah Thompson, held on to a flicker of hope that the colonial forces wouldn't dare attack on a holy day. A surprise attack and desperate defense. On the frigid dawn of December 3, 1854, the pre-dawn silence was shattered by the booming crack of gunfire. The colonial troops, led by Captain Henry Dana, had launched a surprise attack, shattering the miners' belief in the sanctity of Sunday. Panic erupted within the stockade. Many miners, caught off guard and still half asleep, were cut down in the initial hail of bullets. The miners, despite the surprise, fought back with a ferocity born of desperation. The Southern Cross flag, defiant under the pale winter sky, became a beacon of their unwavering spirit. Casualties mounted on both sides as the battle raged. The stockade falls, but a legacy endures. The fight, though short-lived, was a bloody one. The colonial forces, better equipped and trained, eventually overwhelmed the miners. The Eureka Stockade fell, leaving at least 22 miners and 5 soldiers dead. The Battle of the Eureka Stockade, though a military defeat for the miners, proved to be a pivotal moment in Australian history. It became a powerful symbol of the fight for democracy and workers' rights. The grievances that led to the rebellion the exorbitant licensing fees, 
the oppressive tactics of the troopers and the lack of political representation for miners resonated across the colony. Public opinion, initially divided, swung in favour of the miners. The harsh treatment of captured rebels and the execution of some further fueled public outcry. The colonial government, facing mounting pressure, was forced to reform the goldfields administration. The license fee was replaced with a miner's right, a much cheaper permit that granted voting rights. This reform, a direct consequence of the Eureka Stockade, paved the way for greater democracy in Victoria. The legacy of the Eureka Stockade extends far beyond the events of that fateful Sunday. It became a rallying cry for workers' rights and democratic reform throughout Australia. The Southern Cross flag, initially a symbol of rebellion, evolved into a potent symbol of Australian identity and egalitarianism. The Eureka Stockade stands as a testament to the power of collective action in the fight for justice. While the miners may have lost the battle, they won the war for fairer treatment and a voice in their own governance. Their story continues to inspire Australians to this day, reminding them of the importance of fighting for what they believe in. Thanks for watching. Please share thumbs up and subscribe.